Hi and welcome back to Love English. I'm Layla and today I have got a really, really, really simple but I think exceptionally useful lesson for you. Whether you're a native speaker of English or a non-native, this lesson might just come in handy and you may even want to share this lesson with your parents or even your grandparents. Yes, today we are looking at acronyms, specifically for this thing. Yes, acronyms that we use commonly in text messages, tweets, on even Instagram, any kind of social media. Language over the past 10, 20 years, particularly the last 10 years, has massively changed, all because of this little thing. Why? Well, we want to speak faster. We want to get our message across more clearly. And I'll say it again, faster, quicker. That's what it's all about. We don't want to waste time texting people, sending long text messages with long drawn out spellings and full words when a couple of letters will suffice. So before we get started with the lesson, I'm actually going to share with you a private text between Sabra and I. Here it is, have a look. You'll notice that we've used quite a few acronyms. And what I want you to do is by the end of the lesson, you should understand what all of these acronyms are and you should be able to translate this text message into full correct English. So in the comments box below, I have put this exact text and I want you to copy, paste and retype the acronyms into the correct word or words. So there's a little bit of a love English challenge for you today. And of course, do try and make an effort to comment using these acronyms in the comments section below. I'll respond with a few of my own. And if I miss any acronyms out that you think are really important when it comes to texting, do share them. There's quite a few here that I didn't know before that I found really entertaining and quite useful to know. So, see how many you can teach me. Now before we get started, don't forget, click that subscribe button and of course the notifications bell so that you are notified when our lessons go live. And you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook where you'll find lots more video content and of course, Insta stories where we share just a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes at Love English. Right, on with the lesson. It's time to text or tweet. Okay, number one. This is really kind of obvious, tonight. So clearly, two, if any of you have realized, is actually a homophone of two or two. So therefore it works really well when texting. Whether that's tonight or tomorrow, we often use it to abbreviate, to shorten the word and to use in text writing. So as well as tomorrow, tonight you also might have G2G, got to go. There's actually three in that first one for you. I'm free tonight. Got dinner plans? Number two, B F N. B F N. Anyone take a guess as to what that means? Bye for now. Bye for now. So at the end of a text, you might just want to sign off with B F N. Bye for now. Chat later. Number three, I feel a bit stupid for not knowing this one, but it does seem pretty obvious. B, C, and no, we're not referring to before Christ time period. We're actually saying because, because, got to go, because it's late. And before, I think this is quite an obvious one. I've seen this used a lot. B, T, W, B, T, W, by the way, by the way. So we use this when we want to kind of add something that perhaps we didn't think someone knew um, tell them something that we think is quite important. By the way, it's mum's birthday tomorrow. So it's a, usually an add-on, it's something extra when you might have been texting and talking about something else. Number five, see ya. You, Y-O-U, often is abbreviated to ya. And to be fair, when we speak, we do actually usually say ya. It was lovely to see ya. It was lovely to see ya. 
but we also use acronyms to shorten this down further when speaking, see ya. And again, you can kind of understand where a lot of these acronyms come from. C is a homophone of C, essentially. The letter sounds like the word. So, see ya. Right, number six, another nice simple one. And again, one that I wouldn't use, but I've definitely seen used. LMK, LMK, let me know. So tell me, let me know if you can't make it tonight. Let me know if you can't make it tonight. Okay, number seven. Now I'm sure it used to be PM, private message, but it seems like nowadays everyone's using DM, DM me direct message me. So send a private message not shared on Facebook or Instagram. DM me for more information. You can DM us on Instagram if you go and follow us there. Right, number eight. Now I actually discovered this one when I was creating a lesson for my media students at the university and I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought very useful, probably more for my age range and above. I'm not that old but still not young enough to really class myself as the kind of YouTube generation. So this one, E-L-I-5, E-L-I-5, kind of looks like a top secret government code for something. But in fact, it means explain like I'm five. So how would you explain something to a five-year-old? You'd simplify it. You wouldn't want to make it too complicated. So where there's a big complex plan going on, we're going to meet at 7.30, but then Sarah's meeting us at 8. And then we're thinking to go for a drink before we have dinner. Da, da, and I'll just be like, okay, just explain like I'm five. E-L-I-5. What time do I need to be where? Keep it simple. So try using that in the comment section below because I think it's brilliant. Um, you might feel that way about grammar sometimes. You might want to write on some of my conditional lessons. E-L-I-5, explain like I'm five. The grammar gives you a headache and you just wanna keep it as simple as possible. Okay, I'm not very comfortable using this one. I've never come across it before, but apparently it's quite common. F-T-W, F-T-W for the win. So this is typically used as kind of a rallying cry, like cheering for someone or encouraging someone or as kind of an exclamation when you've done something, when you've completed something. When you've achieved something. I've almost finished my essay. One more late night FTW for the win. So yeah, let me know. Have you heard that one before or is that a new one for you? I don't think it's as common in the UK as maybe it is in America, but I could be wrong. Right, number 10, a brilliant one, FOMO. And we do say FOMO. It's become common language. You can almost refer to it. It's quite a nice expression and does have a lot of meaning. Fear of missing out. So fear of missing out, you don't want to be not included in something. She was asking me what time we were meeting tomorrow night. Do I sense a bit of FOMO? Did you want to join us for the cinema tonight? Number 11, FWIW. FWIW. I do feel like some of these get a little bit more complicated than they need to be. But essentially, for what it's worth. For what it's worth. And when we say for what it's worth, it might be that we're trying to comfort someone, share our opinion and just say, look, this is how I feel. This is what I think for what it's worth. For what it's worth, I thought your meal was delicious last night. Thank you so much. And that could be in response to someone saying they didn't like someone's cooking. For what it's worth, I think you're doing a great job. Okay, number 12. I already snuck this in earlier. G to G, got to go. But you could also use GT. G. I've seen that as well. Got to go, meaning I need to leave like now. 13, IDK. Simple, you know it. Actually, I don't know it. I don't know. IDK. What time are we meeting tonight? IDK. I don't know. Oh, number 14. I L Y. I love you. Hey, sweet. So, nice and simple, add that on the end. Probably not what you want to write to a girlfriend, you should make an effort and actually text the whole thing, guys, because sometimes these acronyms do come across as being a bit lazy. Number 15, I-M-O or I-M-H-O 
in my opinion or in my humble opinion, meaning it's just my opinion, you don't have to believe everything I say or agree with me, but in my opinion or in my humble opinion, I think you should dump him. So a really nice way of sharing your opinion in a text or a tweet or an Insta post. I do think on Insta, people tend not to use these acronyms so much. It does tend to be WhatsApp more than anything. IRL, another one I didn't know, again, showing my age, but IRL in real life. Now, in this case, you're referring to the world outside of the internet, you know, where you can actually see and touch people. So IRL in real life. It looks really big in photos, but IRL, the Mona Lisa, is tiny. Number 17, JK. No, we're not talking about the writer of the Harry Potter series, but in fact, we're referring to just kidding. Just kidding. So when you're joking, when you're not being serious, you might just want to write JK. I do think that some of these acronyms can be really, really useful because in text messages, I'm sure some of you have had it before, people have misunderstood what you said. So using some of these acronyms, just to clarify that you are joking, and of course using strategically placed emojis, laughter, a smile, sad face, it really creates the tone of your message and people should hopefully understand clearly what you're saying and there's no miscommunication. Okay, number 18, and I'm really not gonna spend much time on this, LOL, lol. We can say lol, but please don't say it in real life, it makes me crazy laugh out loud. Be careful, there are some people that have actually misunderstood and thought this meant lots of love. That kind of confusion can be a little bit embarrassing in a text message. Now 19 and 20, I'm putting these separately because I do think one is much stronger than the other. L-M-A-O, L-M-A-O, laughing my, yes, your ass off. But 20, L-M-F-A-O, much stronger, and probably not to use with your grandmother maybe, but essentially laughing my, and we can say fricking, I think. A lot of people say friggin' or fricking as replacement obviously of the rude word, the ruder swear word. Laughing my freaking ass off. So there's two variations there for you, 19 or 20. Basically you're saying something is really extremely funny. I tend to just stick with LOL because nothing really makes me laugh my freaking ass off. Not really. 21, NBD, no big deal. Quite nice, particularly if someone's worried about your response. I'm really sorry, I can't make tonight at the cinema. NBD, and maybe a thumbs up or a smiley face would show that you don't mind. It's not a big problem and then not to worry too much. So in that case, we're using it genuinely to say something isn't a problem, it's not a big problem, a big deal, but it can also be to downplay a brag or be a bit more sarcastic about something. You know, I got an A today in English, NBD. So downplaying the boast that you're sharing, the brag, but in a more sarcastic way. Similarly, NP, no problem, no problem. Do we meet at seven tonight rather than six? NP. Number 23, NSW, blah, blah, blah. Number 23, NSFW, got to get these out right, NSFW, not safe for work. So you might put this in the title of an email perhaps, or at the top of your text message, so in case you're sending something a bit, I suppose, rude, um, and someone you know is at work, then they'll be careful not to let their boss or anyone around them see it. NSW, NSFW, not safe for work. Never heard that one before. Have you guys? Is it one that you would actually use? Seems a bit weird to me. Number 24, NVM, NVM, never mind. So never mind, you're essentially saying, oh, not a problem, or don't worry, it's okay now. Have you seen my trainers? Never mind, they're under the bed. Number 25, OMG, okay. I use this one. This one I do use. Oh my God. Or if you want to be less blasphemous, it could be, oh my gosh. We often replace God for gosh. Some people can be offended when you use God in this way. O-M-G. It's used as an exclamation to show that you're shocked, surprised, or even excited about something. O-M-G, you got the job. 
O-T-O-H on the other hand. So there we're simply using a fancy but. We're looking at contrast. So we're using it to compare two sides of an argument. So I usually teach on the other hand in academic writing, but here we're using it for text writing. You wouldn't use any of these in an essay or a formal letter, email, anything like that. It's purely for informal communication, texting in this way. Ooh, it's so late. On the other hand, I could watch a few more episodes of Cobra Kai. Have you seen that on Netflix? Check it out. It is so good, guys. 27, OMW. OMW, on my way. That's actually much quicker than writing coming or nearly there. I'm going to use that next time on my way and see if anyone actually knows what I'm talking about. So OMW, on my way. Nice, quick, easier than having to type out coming. Nearly there. Ruffle? Could you say it like that? Probably not. R-O-F-L. Rolling on the floor laughing. This really should have been put with the others, but never mind, it's here now. Rolling on the floor laughing. Now that really does suggest that you have found something incredibly funny. And really when LOL or L-M-A-O, hold on, I can't remember all of these now, <laughs> when the other two are just not strong enough. Rolling on the floor laughing, you're literally, you're out of control, you're rolling on the floor. Number 30, I didn't know this, RT, retweet, retweet. So you can put that, and I suppose it must be a hashtag as well, when you want someone to retweet, reshare what you have just said. I'm assuming it is more just for Twitter rather than Instagram or anything else. 31, TBH, to be honest. When you're really trying to express yourself and say, you know, this is how I feel, TBH. Now, someone did this with me the other day and I actually found it really irritating and thought, to be honest, I'd rather you make the effort and text me a full sentence if you're not happy. 32, THX, thanks. Because X often does make the X sound. So thanks, thanks. T-I-A, thanks in advance. So you're thanking someone before they've actually done something for you. Do you mind picking up my dry cleaning tonight? T-I-A. 34, T-M-I, one that actually you'll hear used because we're basically saying too much information. You've shared and told us too much. We don't need to know the details about your operation or how much you threw up last night after drinking too much alcohol. T-M-I. 35, T-T-Y-L. T-T-Y-L. Yeah, that's right. Talk to you later. So a nice way to sign off again. Talk to you later. T-T-Y-L. 36. I should have known this one because I have been working from home for the past few months. WFH. WFH. Working from home. Nice and simple. Let's people know where you are. Easy. And I've definitely heard people say, like FOMO, YOLO. You only live once. Really nice. Come on. Let's stay out a bit later. Y-O-L-O. -O. You only live once. Number 39, YSK, you should know. So when you expect someone to know the information that you're asking, it's your mother's birthday, YSK. And number 40, actually, I don't have a number 40, it's over to you. I want you to share an acronym with me that I probably don't know. Don't make it up, make sure it's a real one, one that you've seen used, one that you've used, and share it in the comments section below for other people to see. Make sure that you write the acronym and then the words and perhaps a sentence to go with it to give us a clear context of how to use it. And that's it guys. Don't forget as well our Love English Challenge. Try and decipher mine and Sabra's text from all of these acronyms that I've just gone through with you. I hope there are a few new ones that you didn't know before. There certainly were quite a few for me while I was doing all the research for this lesson. Doesn't mean I'm going to use many of them. And remember, they are for texting, tweeting, Instagram, social media, informal English, written English. Try not to speak using them and definitely don't use them in any kind of formal writing. That's it for now. Nice, simple, easy lesson. And of course, do share any lesson suggestions down in the comments section below. It's a new year. We need new ideas. Thanks for watching again. Bye.